Hi, welcome to Lessons of the Lab. Tonight we're gonna to be talking about how to think through an emergent situation. During those fast, quick moments that you have to get someone stabilized, get them to where they need to go, um, becomes a much quicker head to, than a, your regular head to toe assessment. I know you guys have learned really good skills of how to do a head to toe assessment, how to prioritize information, and how to do like your med pass and all that. But when it comes to an emergent situation, we have to do things fast and not all information is equal and not all information is important. So I wanna give you a quick little frame of reference of how to think through when you're walking into a room where you think something just might not be quite right. So we're gonna keep it as recognize, action, and care. And what that boils down to is I walk into John's room and I say, hey John, you're not, you don't look like you're feeling real well. You're kind of pale. You look like you're struggling to breathe. Something seems not quite right, okay? That's that first doorway assessment. That's that first recognize something's not right, something's wrong. So we're gonna recognize that and then I'm gonna start digging. I'm gonna be like, well, okay, I see that he's pale. I see that he's not breathing real well. I see that, um, you know, oxygen is awfully, obviously gonna be some of our issue here. What that means is I'm not gonna look at his toes. I'm not gonna look for pedal pulses. I'm not gonna assess his belly sounds. Maybe I'm gonna break out that stethoscope and listen to his lung sounds, but I'm not gonna less necessarily listen to everything, okay? You have to start prioritizing information. Not all information is equal, okay? So that then we're gonna get into action. That's where we've come up with a plan. Okay, I've seen this is wrong and I've seen this is wrong. I need to come up with a plan. I need to come up with something to do. I need to do an action. But the goal of our action is always to stabilize as best we can. We may not be able to stabilize in the environment we're in. If I'm in a clinic at a, a, a pediatric clinic or something, I'm not gonna necessarily be able to stabilize every kid that walks through my door. I need to know that I need to get him to where he needs to be, okay? Then the next thing we're gonna do is once we stabilize as much as we can, we're gonna transfer to the care that needs to be done, okay? So if we need to transfer them somewhere else or if we just need to change assessments, if he fell and hit his head, I need to just be doing probably Q1 hour neuro checks. That's just a change of assessment. That's not necessarily a transfer of care. However, if he's a rapid response call on a med surge floor, I probably need to move him to progressive care or to ICU. Another way to think about this, you guys have worked with these priority care maps before. This is a way of thinking and organizing thoughts quickly. And once you do it enough times, you won't have to do it out on a piece of paper. But what this is, is in the middle, instead of being just a disease process, this is that important information. Then we start going through in our head and start putting in these pieces. You may not get to four, you may not get to three concepts. It may just be your top two. But that's how nurses think, that's how we get through. I start pulling out the information that is important. So if I come into John's room and I'm like, hey John, you seem like you're not doing well. You've got shortness of breath, you're pale, you, you have a trach, that's been there for a long time, but something's missing in this picture. That's my important information, okay? Shortness of breath, pale, struggling to breathe, okay, those are all my things. Has a trach, even though that's a normal for him, that's still an abnormal for a lot of people and we it definitely relates back to this. Notice in my important information, I'm not putting his bowel sounds. I'm not putting that he has pedal pulses. I'm not necessarily checking if he has pulses. He's, or, he's alert and oriented, so okay, he's got a pulse. I don't necessarily need to check that. So real quick, gas exchange is where I'm going, and maybe Pale says that maybe we've got some perfusion issue, okay? And I'm like, okay, so what's my action? How do I stabilize him? Oh, John, I noticed your trach mask is off. We need to get that back on you, buddy. You gotta quit pulling that off, okay? That would be my action, and then I stabilize him. Maybe I check his O2 sat again. Maybe I didn't check it the first time because I was more worried about what was going on. And these things, my patient told me much more what, what the issue was than any number did. So don't think that every time you have to get a set of vital signs, you don't have vital signs or a blood pressure cuff in your car if you come up on a scene, but you can still check if someone has a pressure or has a pulse. You may not need to count it, but you know if it's regular, okay? So that's the kind of information. A lot of times we, we rely a lot on our numbers 
But I tell you now, your nurse sense, that doorway assessment, that walking into the room, that will help you a lot in getting through these emergent situations. Recognize, dig into it. Again, you guys already have dug into this information. You know the patho of gas exchange and why that's important and the patho of perfusion and why that's important. So if you need to slow down the process to help your brain rebuild this type of tool, go for it. Gas exchange, I need to know this because these things are saying that this is bad. I know he's not gonna live much longer if we don't get his airway going and get that oxygen back on him, okay? So that's kind of a tool that our brains just kind of naturally go through. But if you need to practice it, do it so that you are strong when you walk into that emergent situation. Hey John, you feeling better? Awesome, glad we got you stabilized. We don't need to transfer your care, but maybe I do need to check on you a little more often because you seem to be pulling off your trach mask a lot. All right, he's ready for bed and I'm ready to give you guys the next challenge of think of an emergent situation that you've seen or that you've gone through or a TV show you've watched and fill something like this out. Just practice putting it in that priority map and understanding what different pieces were important.